The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN. Tuesday morning, 8.30 a.m., 60 minutes to go until the start of the trading day. And we got markets in negative territory, but off of the lows of the pre-market session. Right now, you're looking at a Dow futures off 218 points, 25,961. S&P futures minus 22, trading at 31.49. NASDAQ futures off just 32 points. That's about three-tenths percent, trading at 10,565. Quite a day for the markets. Quite a day for the NASDAQ yesterday. Quite a day for what? Tesla, Amazon, Microsoft, Apple. You can name all those fang talks. Netflix as well. Uh, all of them having a huge tech rally, pulling back a bit. You only have the NASDAQ off about three tenths percent right now with the S&Ps off seven tenths and the Dow off just more than eight tenths percent in the red. Oil, negative 26 cents at 40.37. We're looking at a 10 year yield right now of about 0.6. 7%. We're getting some higher price and lower yield yet again. The 10 year up three ticks at 139.02. You got the 30 year up 13 ticks at 178.12. Got a chart of the SP up here. Let me get rid of this drawing first. We'll uh, click there, get that off. So there is, we'll start it off from yesterday's action. You open the futures at about 3121 Sunday night. Zooming in on the action for the trading day, you'd accelerate higher in the final about half hour of the day. From 3.30, you were trading at about 31.60. You finished the day at about 31.70, actually make it up to a high overnight of 31.84 at just about 9 o'clock Eastern time. And from there, you trade a bit lower. We reach a low at about 6 a.m. this morning, under 31.40. Since then, we've traded up a bit 31.48. Over in Europe right now, you get the DAX down about 1.2%. You get FTSE down 1.3%, CAC curl down more than a percent. As far as Asia went last night, the Shanghai barely positive by about three tenths percent, the Nikkei negative by four tenths, and the HSI negative by 1.3%. Gold contracts right now down five dollars at 1787. We get silver down 20 cents at 1838, and the oil contract negative 30 cents at 4033. Jumping around, I'm gonna start it off with the VIX. A little bit of elevated action yesterday for the type of market action we had, right? You had the S&Ps accelerating between about 20, 30, 40 points, given where you were in the day. The VIX, though, wouldn't navigate too far away from the 28 price tag. And as you'd expect, this morning, we're getting negative action in the market. We're getting an elevated in the VIX. We're above 29 at one point, currently trading at 28.32. Jumping around to some of the tech stocks, how about Tesla? We'll start it off with Tesla. Closed at 13.71, made it as high as 14.36 last night. Still, you're up more than $20 right now of where you're going to open on Tesla at 13.92. You had Amazon shares hitting 3000 for the first time yesterday, we're, we're looking to open in positive territory yet again, even with the S&Ps down 25 points. Amazon's up about $6 right now at 3,063. Apple shares, Apple looking to open at about 374, up a bit from the 375 excuse me, 373.85 closing yesterday. So you can see we were higher, the market sells off a bit overnight. We were as high as about 375, 375.78. All-time highs for Microsoft, Microsoft shares, uh, excuse me, all-time highs for Apple, right? Microsoft shares were up to 211.88. Right now, you're off a bit of yesterday's close, 210.02. Netflix shares, did we get 500? We didn't. 499.50 was the high early yesterday. We're currently trading at about 495. Not bad on Netflix shares. Jumping around to other stories we have going on, just a quick look at the volatility. I mean, staggering numbers when you look at it, right? Uh, a percentage or two is nothing in this market. What I was going to say is even on the small days, you're dealing with half a percent, six tenths, four tenths, three tenths. Uh, and then the big days are anywhere from about 1.2 to 1.8 to 2.7 across the board. Uh, the volatility, folks, not going away anytime soon. EU cuts economic forecast for the region, now projecting an 8.3% 
slump this year. That's quite a number, folks. The outlook has worsened over the last two months, irrespective of the steps that most European countries have taken to reopen their economies. The European Commission said Tuesday that economic activity is expected to pick up in the second half of the year, though it will remain incomplete and uneven on the back of social distancing measures. The Italian economy will contract the most among all EU members by 11.2% this year. Italy hit one of the countries hit hardest of them all, if not the hardest early on in the COVID epidemic. Um, and not surprising that that plays out as it does. Since we're on the numbers, stark, stark numbers, um, stark numbers, no other way to put it in terms of the U.S. We're dealing with approaching 3 million cases, 130,000 deaths, the curve well above the first area of our acceleration back in the middle of April. Um, we'll see what happens. As far as Florida goes, folks, zooming in on the numbers in Florida, it's tough when you get some weekend testing, right? Um, there's anomalies in this data. It's got to smooth itself out, which is why I'm always focusing on this in terms of the seven day average. When you get into here in Florida, you see what's going on there. I mean, yeah, you could argue maybe there's some flattening there, but we're approaching a 10,000 cases, folks, uh, a day. So we'll see what happens. But in terms of where you get into the positive percentages, I mean, it's just hovering at 15% anywhere given, no matter, no matter how many people are getting tested, folks, 15% are coming back positive. Uh, that's indicative of community spread everywhere. So I don't see how this slows down and I don't see how it doesn't hit the economy in a more dramatic way than potentially uh, S&P sitting at about 3,200 almost, which was where to put some context into things. You know, we're coming right back up to that high we had and look at the acceleration we had, right? The similar things happen too on this high early in June. We're now early in July, exactly one month later. Uh, you had the market on these final few days before of the escalation, June 5th and June 8th, climbing higher, but to correlate where the VIX was on June 5th and June 8th, let's take a look, right? Yeah, so you actually had the VIX going up on the 8th, even though that correlated to the market high, a little bit of volatility getting priced into this market. And then, of course, things accelerate with the VIX and the market falling apart on June 11th. Back to the S&Ps. And as you can see, you know, tame action at the top until it falls apart. The last time we were up at this area on June 11th, you're talking about a high bar of 3188 down to below 3000, almost a 200 point S&P collapse with the headlines coming out. Um, it's tough to make a risk reward play right now for an acceleration higher in the S&Ps. Um, when you think about the possibility that we could just be in a little bit of a consolidation, right? It wouldn't be the end of the world if your consolidation was 3,000 to 3,200. That's a nice consolidation considering where we were down to 2,200 at one point, bouncing around this area. We almost bounced around in this area the first time when the market fell apart. But we're now approaching that 3,200, a little bit of fear in the market. I was not surprised when I woke up this morning and saw the S&P said pull back 24 points. Would have been tough to extend the gains we had yesterday. And if you really look at yesterday's action, right, we traded higher by midnight, okay? And then the market just kind of hung out all day between 3160 and 3170, right? All day yesterday, uh, hanging out at these highs, but not able to get too much action. You push it higher overnight and then boom, we go from 3184 down more than 45 S&P points to 3143. Stay tuned, folks. Come back after the break. See what else we have on tap for Tuesday trading. I'll be right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the DFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their July 4th Tiger Dollar Sale. For one week only, we've doubled all the bonuses where you can now get up to a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase. Tiger Dollars are good on all TFNN newsletters, webinars, and trading services, and never expire. For all the details and to get your Tiger Dollars before this sale ends Monday, July 6th, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. 
The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profit in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 the prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps negative by 23, Dow negative 245, NASDAQ off just 38 points right now. Jumping around to some of the stocks with action so far this morning. A couple biotechs out there, Regeneron, they signed a $450 million contract with the U.S. government for its coronavirus therapy. So let's jump over. They had some action yesterday talking about a phase three study going forward. There's your volatility on yesterday's action. Uh, end of the day up a bit. And today, though, we're trading up $13 to about $640 from $627 on Regeneron. Also, Novavax. So Regeneron signs a $450 million deal. How about Novavax getting awarded a $1.6 billion deal to cover testing, commercialization, and manufacturing of a potential coronavirus vaccine in the U.S. with the name of delivering 100 million doses by January 2021. Shares of Novavax surged more than 35%. You get $1.6 billion for potentially $100 billion excuse me, 100 million doses. Uh, NVAX is their symbol. Look at that pop from 80 to 117. Parents, some of those gains don't get caught up in some of that hype, folks. Um, 101.36 as it's pulled back now, $17 from that high that it had just at 6.45, 6.30 in the morning this morning. Those biotechs, volatility, watch out. Uh, talk about volatility, jump into sports for a moment. If you saw the story, Patrick Mahomes, Kansas City Chiefs, young stud quarterback, Super Bowl winner out there, signing a 10-year extension, not even a contract. He had two years left in his contract. He signs a 10-year extension on the heels of the two years he has left remaining for the tune of 400 million, his agent throwing around the number 503 million of what it could reach, half a billion dollars. Uh, remarkable action there. Uh, now, when you when you look at these rookie contracts, right? Sometimes the best opportunity for an NFL team. I'm jumping around a bit, but this is always cool talking about a little sports. We'll bring a little sports into the market action. Uh, some of the NFL teams, some of the best chances they have for a Super Bowl run is when you have a remarkable quarterback that is still on their rookie contract because you have an uh, an amazing athlete that you are paying well below their market share. And in the NFL, what makes the NFL so great is that, as they say, any given Sunday, right? Any given Sunday, because, um, yeah, you can have great teams and they cycle through. 
But in theory, there's a lot of parity in the NFL because of the hard cap for the salary cap. You can't just have uh, a Yankees and a Red Sox where they go out, they outspend their opponents to the tune of three to one, four to one on a salary. Some some teams have two or three players in in Major League Baseball that are making the entire salary of some other teams. In football, that doesn't happen. You get a lot of parity. So quarterbacks on their rookie deals, you're saving a lot of money. You can spend that money on assets like quarterbacks, defense, all that stuff. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, coming back to it, he was going to earn $2.7 million this year. Now, they had already picked up the one-year extension on him to push it to two years, so he was going to get something like $24 million next year. But you can see, you go from literally earning a couple million dollars um, on your rookie deal, and, you know, guess what? Patrick Mahomes, rookie quarterback, uh, excuse me, on his rookie deal, young quarterback, Super Bowl winner, he was going to get paid nonetheless, but remarkable numbers in the NFL, $500 million. And that is the biggest contract of any sports league ever uh, for Mahomes. All right, jumping around to stocks with action this morning. We talked about Novavax and we talked about Regeneron. Quest Diagnostics. So this one, it's a tough deal, right? It's tough to, to fight through a lot of the noise that you're hearing out there about what's going on in terms of COVID-19. The president clouding it more than most, in my opinion. All right, you talk about testing. Testing so crucial. We're in Florida. This is beyond uh, just rhetoric. It's uh, it's quite a, an epidemic coming through the state of Florida right now. And Quest Diagnostics, the medical lab operator, said turnaround time for COVID-19 test results has lengthened to four to six days for non-priority patients as demand for the diagnostic tests continue to surge. People are waiting almost six days to get those test results back. Now, if you're going and getting testing and you don't know the results, you better be self-quarantining, okay? That's a fact. But to hear that one of the biggest lab operators doing testing in the whole country had, doesn't have the ability to push a, t a test result back to somebody for almost a week, that is not the best testing in the world by far. It's, it's, it's lacking severely, um, so not good. I, I, I just read that a couple minutes ago, talking about things to cover. Um, I wouldn't have guessed that from the rhetoric I hear out there. It's a tough deal as cases are really surging here in Florida. Texas, California, uh, I believe it's South Carolina, Houston, ICU beds filling up. Um, in Florida, it's happening as well. Elective surgery is going away as they try and make sure that the beds that they need are available because of the acceleration in these cases. Okay, Sirius getting into the podcasting game a little bit more. They're nearing a deal to buy EW Scripts podcasting unit Stitcher, according to people familiar. Podcasting turning into a big acceleration. You had, of course, Spotify scooping up Joe Rogan. I believe they scooped up somebody else as well in the in the podcasting game. Uh, Sirius. I'm a user of Sirius. I like their product in terms of being in the car, being at home, but their stock, not so sure about that one. Square. Square remains on watch after closing at a record high Monday. Mobile payments company shares have more than tripled from their March low. The pandemic prompted more consumers to use Square's payment options. Let's jump over to Square because this is quite, uh, we were reading Tom and I on the program yesterday. Yeah. So check out this pop. This probably had to do with the news story we were looking at. It, you almost can't, I mean, it just went from 118 to 128. By the end of the day, you're back at 118. Um, and they were talking about that they might be able to get 20% of direct deposit accounts in terms of people setting up Square accounts, getting their paycheck in there. 20% at one point of those accounts might go to Square as the world just changes. NVIDIA getting an upgrade. Uh, 460 bucks from 420 a share, pointing to robust, robust gaming market ahead of new console launches from both Microsoft and Sony. I haven't owned a game console in a while. It used to be a, a gamer of some sorts, and we're climbing right up to the highs of yesterday right now with NVIDIA. Bid ask of just above 396, and to put it, this in some context, you're dealing with all-time highs from basically 180 March 18th, and we're now approaching $400 on NVIDIA. The world needs chips to run, folks, if we're all going to be at home on our computers and our gaming consoles. That's the bottom line. Uh, let's jump to Microsoft and Sony as well. We know Microsoft's at all-time highs. There's that acceleration, and we're going to open basically flat at about 210.30. Sony, S-N-E, I believe. Yeah, Sony um, from 73 to 50, and you're going to open at about $70 today for Sony. Yeah, Red Rock, I saw this story over the weekend. Sad story that their president, Richard Haskins, died last weekend in a watercraft accident. He was a young guy, I think he was 56 years old. He was the president um, 
and they're looking for somebody else. The Las Vegas casino operator said it would announce a succession plan in the company days, in the coming days, excuse me. Uh, be safe out there on the waterways, folks. We had a lot of listeners in Florida. It's summertime. We just went through the July 4th weekend. It's unfortunate, right? We, you come into July 4th, you say, be safe out there. And um, be safe out there. It's a real deal. Uh, there was some speculation, I think, that maybe he was on a jet ski. I have no idea. I had heard that. You know, it's but jet skis, no matter what, they are dangerous, folks. Be careful. I love jet skis. I'll go on them all the time. You just got to be aware that um, those boats, you're on there on the weekend, especially big weekends, boats everywhere. Be careful out there. Sad deal. Young guy passing away, president of Red Rock and jumping over these casinos, right? Red Rock, uh, yeah, I think it was probably a t tough day for them yesterday, right? There's your open on that news from t 11 down to 1020, trading at 1052. Some of those casino stocks, especially hard hit with cool. All right, S&P's down about 21, trading at 3151. We got the NQ's negative by just 28 points right now within about 100 of those all-time highs yesterday, 10,664 overnight. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the program. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information.
Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P's negative by 20, Dow off 228, checking into other stories. So yesterday, you had the administration releasing a list of the companies that receive the most money from the small business bailout loans. Uh, you can access this direct list. It's downloadable as a spreadsheet. You can get in there. I downloaded it myself, just kind of peeking around. Um, there's a bunch of lists, folks, in terms of where you go. It's the Small Business, business Administration. Just even clicking on it, you'll see what happens. It brings you to, I believe, a yeah, box account. You can download the data. You don't even need to log in anything like that 150,000 plus is in terms of companies that received 150,000 or more and then you can go state by state but I don't think they have as big of a breakdown they really provide the names of the companies that were re re receiving the big loans um, and of those loans you're talking about now let me get in here first yeah so you had of the big companies right these loans disclosed represent nearly three fourths of the total loan dollars approved, but a far smaller portion of the number of actual loans. Yeah, that's because you know you get one company receiving ten or twenty million dollars, folks, uh, with having a few different subsidiaries. That's going to offset a lot of companies getting thirty-five or fifty or sixty thousand dollars, whatever it is, right, on the small end of that list that are just surviving on a couple weeks of payroll. And you have these companies. I mean, look at this. Among companies getting millions in US small business loans, South Korea's biggest airline receiving five to 10 millions, five to 10 million. You're gonna see this continue. Um, in terms of who got these uh, loans and whether they were really deserving of these loans. You have law firms, among notable law firms. Uh, anyway, jumping around, check out that data if you want uh, as they make it available as they should. All right, checking in on the markets as we come into this nine o'clock time frame. Don't forget, folks, stay tuned. We're going to have Larry Pezzavento coming up. And uh, thanks for everybody that participated in the Tiger Dollar Sale. Thanks for the support. We wouldn't be able to do this without you guys out there, you girls out there, tigers, tigresses across the board. Uh, still on the front page. We're going to take it down this morning, so it'll be up there for a brief moment. But check it out on the front page of TFNN. And stay tuned. Should be an interesting day in the market. The s and is down by 21 points, straight at 31.50. NASDAQ right near all-time record highs. Stay tuned, folks. Larry Pesavento coming up with Trade What You See next at TFNN. We'll be right back.